I don't know how well you can hear me because I have an earbud in and I don't know how the mic works with my Bluetooth headphones. So we'll see, and I apologize if I'm out of breath. It's... Hey, there's a reason why this school's nickname is Hills and Stairs University. Um, but we just had an end of the year or end of the summer appreciation barbecue. We know that summer technically isn't over with until September 22nd, but <clears throat> in terms of our summer vacation is over here in like two weeks because school starts back up August 20th. So sorry to all those who have to start back up here shortly. Ah, I'm gonna take a break here for a minute, but it was a decent food. It's like our own catering, which I'm always iffy about. <clears throat> but they had some like weird blueberry almond coffee cake that I want to try. I'm going to take it back to my office, which I <laughs> need to start heading back <laughs> because it's my coworker's lunch now. Um, but at the same time, I'm trying to hit up all the Pokemon stops and gyms because priorities. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it is the first day of the full moon readathon. I have started a little early last night when, uh, let's see, I'm not going to be able to go that way. They're like power spring um and if I drop the phone suddenly it's because someone is near me I'm just gonna hide around this redwood real quick he's walking faster than I expected him to <laughs> um I'm only gonna be slightly paying attention to you because I have to go downstairs uh Yeah, started the full moon readathon. Uh, today's day one. Started a little early with vampires in the lemon grove, since it's a, uh, you know, since it's a short story collection. Since it's a stor short story collection, uh, I figure, and I think there's like seven stories in it, so I should be able to get done in a week. But knowing me, I'll probably take all freaking 13 days of this readathon to do it. Uh, because it's just, I don't know, but I started early just because I wanted to get the first one done. The first one is the title of the anthology or the short story collection, um, Vampires in the Living Group. It was all right. I thought it was an interesting take and kind of like a different take on vampires in terms of, you know, they don't burn in sunlight. They don't need, like, they ultimately just have this never-ending thirst um, that doesn't go away so like blood doesn't help it and they ultimately find that lemons kind of quench it or at least for now so it was an interesting one I liked it and then we're just going hard into the vampire theme and I started Vampires of El Norte, El Norte today by Isabel Cañas um, because it was an ALC or advanced listeners copy through Libro, through their pro uh, advanced listener program, or no, it's their whatever program. <laughs> you know what? I, you, you know what I mean. So, not part of my TBR, um, because <laughs> I didn't think I'd actually get to it right now, but saw it this morning. I was like, all right, downloaded it and started listening to it. So, I guess I'm doing that now. I don't know what prompt that works for, but there you go. But yeah, I gotta get to the library because I need to let my coworker go to lunch. And I just was told by someone else that our library had a fire alarm. So it's gonna be great. <laughs>
a full moon readathon, and I really don't have much to update you on. I'm just doing my on um, my break, I do a loop around the university, uh, mostly for Pokemon Go, <laughs> but it's a good excuse to get out away from my computer and just go walk around for 15 minutes or so. So I think I'm the only one that really does Pokemon Go anymore. I have a couple, I do have a couple librarians that play with me and that are obsessed with it right now. So <laughs> um, we're actually like one of the librarians and I are actually going to go uh, do a lunch date slash raid on uh, this weekend, so maybe I'll take you with me on that. Um, but we'll see, considering I'm filming on my phone and it's hard to play Pokemon Go while I'm filming on my phone. So, um, yeah, like I said, didn't get much done, mostly because we have a, like, not a leak so much, I guess it's considered a leak. Basically, our shower won't turn all the way off. So, we spent all this last weekend and cleaning and then this last last night cleaned up the rest of what we needed to get cleaned up because we were pretty sure that the plumbers would have to go through our closet wall so we had to like clean up the closet a little bit which tends to be like where we just put crap <laughs> so didn't get any reading done didn't read the second story of vampires in the lemon grove um have slowly been listening to vampires of el nort by isabel canyas and so far it's I pretty much have the gist of the summary <laughs> is that um, our main female lead got attacked by something possibly a vampire um, the main male lead ended up leaving um, essentially abandoning her because he thought she was dead and it was his fault so he was running away from his guilt so basically that's all I've gotten to really I'm on chapter three um, it's fine enough so far I was trying to figure out though because I was doing a couple like some book buying today and was really debating and I don't know if I just need to re-listen to it but the Hacienda by Isabella Cañas is, has been on my like read audibly but still want the physical copy but I was really just debating if I wanted sorry I'm trying not to get the <laughs> that's not a good I'm really just been debating if I want the physical copy like if it was that good like I enjoyed it but honestly it was kind of forgettable like I know that I read it I know the story is about sorry if you hear a bunch of traffic I am not that far away from the highway um I'm just trying to think if it's that memorable uh reason I mention it is because it is Jan's book of the uh book club full moon book club pick for August I believe for the end of August so, though I already read it, so and I'm not big on rereading. <laughs> so, meh, we'll see. Sorry, still trying not to get license plates. So, but yeah, that's my update. <laughs>
I'm so tired this morning. So I'm going on day six for work. Um, because my sh schedule is shifting because summer session has ended. I have some, um, and I would prefer to have two two-day weekends as opposed to one three-day and one one-day, particularly right before school starts. So that's why I'm working a six-day shift. Um, and I stayed up too late finishing a cape. I'll have to show you. Um, but it's done. I'm fine. I think <laughs> I'm not liking the way it's ended. It feels unfinished. But I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and give it to my friend. There's a ceremony happening tonight and tomorrow. So I'll go ahead and let her wear it for that. And if she has any qualms with it, she wants it to be longer, wants dangles, whatever, then she can give it back to me and I'll go ahead and put those on. Because she's already paid for it and so I just want her to be happy with it. So that's done. I'm a hundred pages away basically from finishing um from finishing episode thirteen by Craig DeLui. This is a book I've been reading since Summerween. Um, I don't think I've talked to you about it yet. I am still reading it. It's not that I'm not liking it. It's just I didn't. I haven't had time or haven't been motivated to just sit down and read it. I don't know why. Um, but when I do pick it up, it's really quick and easy. And uh, to, for the most part, there's some things that I feel like are going over my head because uh, physics. But, no, like, it's quite literally physics, and sometimes the way Claire talks is like, wait, what? So, I'm like 100 pages away, and I can't wait to be done with it. Like like I said, it's not a bad book, but I just want to be done, because <laughs> I've, I've, I've been reading it for, it feels like, a month. So, yeah. And I'm just wanting to pick up another book for this readathon, since... Episode 13 isn't a part of it. I'm feeling the same way with Vampire of El Nort. Vampires, Vampires of El Nort. But so far, this, that one's okay. I'm about 25% of the way through the audiobook. Um, and we just got to where Nestor is talking with. Um, I don't know what her nickname is. Um, but her f uh, full name is Magdalena. There's Nana, Nana, I think is her nickname. Um, like they've seen each other after nine years. He's realized she hasn't died and she's just mad at him. <laughs> so I'm still looking at the fallout for that. So it is day five of the full moon readathon. I am almost about like five, halfway through the Vampires of El Norte. I'm at like 47%. I am not liking Nene. Nene? Nana. Nena. Magdalena, our main female character. Um, mostly because like a lot of it seems to be internal monologue, which really should be saying out loud. Um, which is really frustrating. So, like, the first third of the book was, like, 
we get essentially the synopsis. He comes back. She's pissed. She's not dead. Um, and she just thinks he abandoned her. I think this whole thing is kind of hinging upon miscommunication or the lack of communication, which I'm annoyed at. But I am liking over... <laughs> it's frustrating because it's what it's most the story. Um, I like when we're actually getting through the story. Um, but it seems so far in, in, in between, really, um, between all the inner monologues. So that's what's frustrating. Like, I think this would be a really good story if there wasn't so many inner monologues of things that they should actually be saying to each other and explaining. So, um, the vampires sound real creepy though. Um, and it's, in, I, I like the concept that Texans essentially have some weird alliance with vampires in order to try to get more land from Mexico. It's, 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 it's sinister. It's weird. Um, it's creepy. I want to know more about it, but instead we're getting a bunch of inner monologue of shit that should be saying out loud. <laughs> um, I'm so close to be almost being done with episode 13. <sighs> I don't have much to say on that. I think a couple of my predictions um, that I had throughout the book are coming to fruition. I am currently um, waiting on a coworker, me, to go to lunch on our days off and see if we can't raid a little bit because she's, I don't think I've raided it before. Um, or I think she's done a couple of one star, but like we were hoping to find others about to try to get like some of the three and four stars maybe so and it should be interesting because i don't know which pokemon are supposed to be raiding now it changed yesterday so i'm gonna go ahead and go into this coffee shop and wait for my librarian friend and hopefully we can get lunch soon because i didn't get breakfast <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I have like a bad headache right now. We went to the river today, didn't get to read. I did finish episode 13 by Craig DeLuey, which is not a part of this TBR, it was part of my submarine TBR, but it's finally done, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, basically, it feels like it was very middle of the road, like one tone. It was interesting overall, it was a quick read, multimedia about a haunted house and these paranormal investigators, two paranormal investigators, a cameraman, 
actress and a physicist who's trying to debunk, debunk everything, um, fig are figuring out what happens after death, essentially. Um, like I said, very, it felt very one note. It was very interesting. I can't say that I would necessarily remember it in a couple months, but ultimately it was just a fun adventure I would say it was like a three stars like I enjoyed it um it wasn't the greatest though but it was a fun read um today is the sixth day of the full moon readathon so unfortunately I only have the one to talk to you about uh I'm 66 percent of the way through um the vampires of El Norte uh and so far okay so this one I will say right now that this is more historical second chance romance with horror elements. Horror is not the main theme here. It's mostly the drama between the two, Nina and Nestor, and miscommunication and lack of communication and occasionally figuring a little bit more out about the vampires and how they're working for the Yankees. I uh, haven't really gotten that far yet, so I'm a little just kind of perturbed and irritated just because, like, that's not what I thought this book was about. Um, so yeah, but I'm hopefully going to finish it at some point. I have, like, a little over two hours left, so, and then hopefully tonight or at some point today we'll be reading, starting Are You Afraid of the Dark? The Tale of the Grave Mother by Rin Chipeco. That's that's it. So I know, sorry, not a very eventful week for you, um, or for me. So, in turn, not for you. Um, but like I said, I have a bit of a headache, so I think I'm going to end this vlog here for now, and I will hopefully have a part two for you who, that will hopefully be a little more interesting, um, because I'm going out of town for a conference, so I'll be going down to the LA area. So, we'll see how that goes stay tuned um, if you made it this far let's go ahead and put a ghost emoji for the paranormal episode 13 um, as well as I think this also has to do with a ghost so like this video subscribe if you have not yet done so and I hope you're in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading I'll see you in another video very soon